it's Chessie from Squeegee and Ink and welcome to Printer's Corner. I'll be answering some of your questions about garment decoration and hopefully giving you some advice and tips and experience from a professional screen printer. This week's topics are around why we don't have an automatic press at the moment, the type of squeegees that we're using and what exposure unit we have. If you want to jump ahead to a section in the video that makes more sense to answer your question, go ahead or you can just stick around and hear what I've got to say about automatic presses. Let me go ahead and answer the first question. It's from Ink to Threads and they've said on Instagram, why don't you guys buy an automatic press? just some reasons <laughs> it's quite broad but our business actually does lots of different things we've come from a, a teaching background where we started the studio as an open access teaching studio i actually still do that i still have people in for the day teach them how to screen print it's like quite irregular maybe a couple of times a month at max i also do things where i expose people's screens and send those we also produce uh, YouTube podcast, we do all our social media, I write for magazines. It's quite broad. And then another chunk of our business is printing for other people. But then that's kind of being overtaken by all the printing that we're doing for Blind Maggot, which is our own brand. So it's kind of like we haven't got that much work coming in commercially that I wanted to be doing and spending all my time on to justify getting an automatic press because I can't just put an automatic press in here. I'd have to move premises and we've got a really good deal going on here with our rent and the space just works for us at the moment. So we'd have to get a new premises, which would mean much more taxes in, in the UK. We have to pay a lot of different electric supplies. We'd have to make sure it's got three phase. There's loads of reasons here. Also, I think making YouTube videos and things is almost a full-time job. If you're not getting sponsored for your equipment, like a lot of the big YouTubers, they're actually getting all those automatic presses for free. <laughs> they're just being given them. They're not earning money from commissions and all that type of work and then having to pay off every month a big automatic press and everything that comes with that. So if someone decided to give us an automatic press and say, make some videos about it, that's completely viable. And then we'd be justified to move to another premises and not have that financial load on us to keep printing for other people in order to pay off the press. That's a really long answer, but that is as transparent as I can be. We've just got lots of different revenue streams and commercial printing on that scale just isn't one. And we can do a lot on this manual. We're not really restricted by the manual press at all. We can still do really colorful stuff. I can still do simulated process, specialist, everything. I'm really happy with just having a manual because I can do a lot with it. But if anyone does want to sponsor us with an automatic press, please go ahead because I'd love to learn all that as well. Uh, why not? One other point I wanted to add as to why we're not buying an automatic press is because all of our client base, which is people learning how to screen print, aren't buying automatic presses straight off the bat. It's not the first thing they're doing. They're building up and all the people that we talk to on our podcast don't start with an automatic. They build up from a manual, they learn the craft, they learn the trade, and then eventually it becomes viable to do it on an automatic so we want to stay relevant for you guys and also I, I really love it and you wouldn't be able to get me to part with my manual press ever it's enjoyable it makes sense for our customers and it's what we can actually teach people to use because we're using it ourselves hopefully that justifies why we don't have an automatic press okay the second question is from observer co what squeegees are those I actually did a whole YouTube video again on squeegees and it is a really interesting topic because often you start out with the wooden squeegees and then you might even go to the, the ones that feel good in your hands, etc, etc. But when you come to print commercially and you're holding the same squeegee for hours and hours on end and you're cleaning that squeegee off with chemicals and things, you can degrade the wood to the point where we actually 
basically have calluses on our hands and we had like little splinters because we'd use that squeegee to death. So it got to the point where we got these ones. I think they're bloody awesome and they're not actually that extortionate in price or anything. And they're really quite light because it's just like that kind of profile. So these are called the metal ergonomic squeegees and they're basically shaped to, your, to the profile of your hand. And another really good thing about them, which I figured out recently, well, I don't know if I figured it out, but I realized recently, is that you can actually use the squeegee blade twice on them because it, it's kind of like concealed in there, but it's not like this screw doesn't go through the squeegee blade. So once this isn't sharp, once you can't feel your, your this, is, I, this actually creeps me out, but if you can't feel your fingerprint, on the edge of the squeegee that shows that your squeegee isn't sharp enough for printing. So when this gets dull, just loosen these screws up which are holding it, flip it over, give it a nice clean and then you've got a brand new squeegee blade. They are really actually affordable in the long term. They do take a little while to invest in to get your whole set for all your screens, but I think they're really worth it. These are my favorite squeegees and we've got a squeegee up there that's hundreds of pounds and I never touch it. And I haven't got on with the Ergo one either because it's got some flex in it, but these are rigid and work really well. They are my squeegee of choice. And I obviously just get those from my normal supplier, which is Screen Print World using the CRP5 discount code, which you can use as well. The final question today is from Juan Herrera and that's on TikTok. And they said, what's your UV exposure unit? My exposure unit is a metal halide bulb and it's a really big exposure unit and it's a single source light and it's the richest source of UV that you can possibly get on the market. It's kind of the gold standard of exposure units and it is probably overkill for most studios, especially if all you're doing is t-shirt printing. Um, you probably don't need the one that I've got. It's also massive, so it's one, I think I can do almost two meter screens by one and a half meters. It's way more than anyone else would need. It's basically because I used to print large, well I still do, we print large scale artwork sometimes and you need huge screens for that type of thing. But at the moment I just get maybe five or six t-shirt screens on there at a time. Uh, I would probably actually advise more of a LED unit now because they're coming on really strong. Something like the Starlight by m &R looks really good and it's got good reviews. I haven't used it myself, I'd like to, but some of those in conjunction with a photopolymer one part emulsion, if you're printing plaster link for example, some of those screens can expose in seconds and they're not going to last as long or be as good as the ones that I can produce with my special emulsions and my very expensive exposure unit, but it'll get you the results that you need for t-shirt printing and textile printing for sure. To round up today's question, which is why doesn't squeegee and ink buy an automatic press is because we don't need to. Uh, we want to stay printing manual because that's who we teach, manual printers, and we want more and more people to get into the industry and start picking up squeegees and printing for themselves. I hope you found this video useful. Please add any comments if you agree or disagree or have your own experience with things that I've spoken about in this video. And don't forget to use the hashtag printers corner if you wanna ask any questions for us to cover in a little bit more detail in a future video. Thanks guys. Thank <laughs> you.